Attitude is defined as the position or bearing as indicating action, feeling, or mood. And it is our actions, feelings, or moods which determine the actions, feelings, or moods of others toward us, and which, to a surprising extent, are success or failure. Consider this. You live simultaneously on three planes. Number one, you are a spiritual being. Number two, you have a marvelous mind. And three, you live in a physical body. Now it's the spiritual, non-physical world where the thought energy is. And of course, you've been gifted with an intellect, and through the use of your intellectual factors, you can tap into this thought world, this non-physical spiritual element of yourself, and build ideas. Because it's ideas that are built with the intellect. And then, of course, those ideas are expressed with and through the physical aspect of your personality, your body. That's where you move into action, and you produce things or results. Earl explained that attitude is our position or bearing as indicating action, feeling, or mood. Now think of what he said. Attitude is action, feeling, or mood. That would indicate attitude is expressed by both your mind and body. Now, we think in pictures or images. We certainly have an image of our body, but we do not have one for our mind. No one has ever seen the mind. Where there is no image, there is confusion. The image is what brings order to the mind. This is why Solomon said, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Everything in the universe is growing or dying, it's create or disintegrate. But where there's no vision, the people will perish. It was after years of serious study that I stumbled upon this beautiful truth. Without an image of the mind, your understanding of attitude will be very likely distorted. However, that does not mean you will not be successful. You could have a great attitude and become highly successful, yet not understand exactly what attitude is and how it has affected your success in life. A person in this position is frequently referred to as an unconscious competent. When this is the case, a person's success would be non-transferable. Since their success has its foundation in their attitude, and since they do not have a clear understanding of what attitude is, they would be unable to explain the cause of their success to another person, possibly even a loved one. Situations like this are not uncommon. Now before we help you in forming an image of the mind, Let's continue with Earl Nightingale's description of the magic word. It is then our attitude toward life which will determine life's attitude towards us. Now what does this mean exactly? Everything operates on the law of cause and effect. Everything we say or do will cause some effect. Now we're charged with producing causes. The effects or rewards of our actions will always take care of themselves. That's why I say success can be guaranteed and will come to us every time if we live in a certain way. Good attitude, good results. Fair attitude, fair results. Bad attitude, bad results. Earl explained everything operates on the law of cause and effect. That was correct. However, we're going to expand upon that. Dr. Warner Von Braun, who is considered the father of space exploration, stated, the natural laws of the universe are so precise that we have no difficulty building a spaceship that we can send to the moon and we can time the landing with the precision of a fraction of a second. He also said these laws must have been set by someone. Everything in life is controlled by law. Cause and effect is just one of the laws. Earl recognized that everything was controlled by law in the final lesson. He quotes Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, Let him learn a prudence of a higher strain. Let him learn that everything in nature, even dust and feathers, go by law and not by luck. I can assure you, you're going to come to love that statement as I do. The law has been described as the uniform and orderly method of the omnipotent God. In other words, the law is God's modus operandi. There are, in fact, seven laws. I found it amazing how well Earl Nightingale included all of the laws in Lead the Field. 
As we come to them, they will be brought to your attention, which will heighten your level of understanding and give you greater control over your life. Now, as we return to lead the field, that is exactly what Earl Nightingale is suggesting. You see, each of us shapes his or her own life, and the shape of it is determined by our attitude, the attitude we hold most of the time. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But it's not quite that easy. For most of us, learning this new habit takes time. But once it's mastered, our lives will become as changed as if we walked out of a dark tunnel into the bright, clear light of day. A person with a poor attitude toward learning, for example, in school or afterward, isn't going to learn very much until he changes his attitude. I know you can think of examples of this in your own life. If we take the attitude that we cannot do something, we generally will not do it. An attitude of failure and we're whipped before we start. So we know then that what we receive from life, what we accomplish or fail to accomplish, is due in large measure to our overall attitude. William James of Harvard said the greatest discovery of his generation was that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. You know, in virtually every seminar you attend and every self-help book you read, William James is quoted, human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. That sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? However, it's not very easy. It can't be. Otherwise, more people would do it. Why don't they? The answer is obvious. They don't know how. James was right. A change in attitude will change your life. However, teachers tell that to students. Doctors tell it to their patients. Sales managers tell their salespeople and counselors tell couples who are having trouble. Just a change in attitude is all you require. The person in question will agree. They desperately want the good that is promised to them. What's the problem? Attitude is a mind-body thing. And we were given no image of the mind. What I am going to share with you now, I found after nine years of searching. It has been the single most valuable concept I have ever learned. For me, it brought all the pieces of the puzzle together.